Vilya, the Ring of Air, the Blue Ring, is one of the three rings of power from Lord of the Rings, forged by Celebrimbor himself, along with Narya, the Ring of Fire, and Nenya, the Ring of Adamant. In this video tutorial, I will be walking you through the process of sketching and painting Elrond's ring in watercolor. I'm Leila Serra from Ciara Studio, and let's get right into it. Okay, let's take a quick look at the image reference we'll be using for today's tutorial. I got this picture from Lord of the Rings fandom website. I'm not sure who to credit for the photo since it's also present on other websites. Anyways, I picked it because, well, you can easily find it online to follow along this tutorial. And it has a nice white background so we can focus on the ring's details. And speaking of the ring, Vilia is a simple men's ring design with minimalistic details. It has an oval shaped sapphire set in the center of a golden ring body and it also has a golden wavy ribbon running on either side of the gemstone all around the ring. So to sketch the ring from reference I'm using my very own handy dandy technique I call the Gurit method. If you watched my other video tutorials on the rings of power you're already familiar with it. Go check them out after watching this one I will link them for you in the description box. So I'm sketching on my watercolor paper with an ordinary HP pencil. At this point, we're only interested in general outlines and proportions. We don't really need any details such as shading or reflections just yet. Only enough information for us to know what kind of highlights or shadows we will need for our painting. As you can see, sometimes I draw over and over to reach the exact proportion I want my shape to have. But I'm left with too many dark lines. And I don't want my drawing lines to show under my painting. So I like to use a kneadable eraser to lift some of the graphite before I start painting and without scratching my paper. I also use a regular eraser to completely remove the pencil lines. To erase the grid, for example, I gently press on my eraser pen in slow and round motion and I sweep away the eraser crumbs with my repurposed makeup brush to avoid smudging the graphite onto my paper. You can, if you want, add in some details for the highlights, mid-tones and dark areas at this stage. You'll use them later as a guide to paint your shadows and reflections. And now we're coming to the fun part, the painting process. Not that I don't like the drawing part, I actually love the entire process of creating a beautiful illustration, from concept to the finished piece. What about you guys? Do you prefer drawing or painting your illustration? Or both, like me? So, our color palette for this ring is pretty straightforward. Yellow and brown for the ring band, and a blue for the sapphire. Either mixed in with a bit of red to get a purple blue for the mid-tones, or pure blue for most of the gemstone. I start by painting the ring band. It's easy enough to render metal textures in watercolor. It's all to do with light. For this tutorial, I'm using my usual water applying and blending technique. Here I'm using the Senelier Yellow Dip. So I load my wet brush with a very small amount of paint and apply it on the lightest areas of the ring. This way, I know I have to stay away from them for now. I won't be layering too many washes over them or worse, paint them brown. <laughs> I find the painting process so relaxing that I get a little carried away sometimes. I mindlessly drown my brush into too much paint and end up painting layer after layer, messing up my light areas. After the first wash is dry, I go back with a dry brush loaded with a tiny bit of paint to accentuate the yellow near the edges. That allows me to determine where to paint the darker tones. If you look at the image reference, the dark areas of the ring are nearly pure black with some brown shades in them. I won't go that dark because I'll be here layering watercolor washes for the next few hours. But if you want your final illustration to look crisp with a high contrast, go for it by all means. I have a bunch of different paintbrushes, and the ones I find myself using the most lately are those synthetic round ones. You've probably noticed that almost all of them are taped around, 
And that is because I used to drop them way too often. And since I was sick of having painting accidents, I decided one day to tape them around with some rough masking tape to get a better grip. It's ugly looking, yes, but it worked like a charm. I don't know if it's because of the tape or the countless hours of painting I accumulated over the time, but no paintbrush slipped out of my hand in a long while. And now I'm too lazy to go over all of them, remove the tape and clean up the sticky bits. You'll also notice that I'm leaving some small areas blank between different paint layers. These are negative spaces. They help create more contrast. I cover this simple watercolor painting trick in some of my other videos if you want to see more examples of how to use this technique in your painting style. At this stage, I'm mixing up my Seigneurier Yellow Deep with a small amount of brown. And the brown I'm using is the um, Burnt Sienna from Seigneurier as well. And I paint the brown layers with a wet brush, so I'll be able to blend them all together. You should always apply your washes from light to dark in watercolor, especially for the darker hues like the brown here. Also remember that watercolor tends to dry out lighter. It's easier to darken a corner of your illustration layer by layer, but you can't really cover up a dark area with a lighter layer of paint in watercolor, so keep that in mind. And also feel free to mix up your brown and yellow to get a nice golden mid-tone hue. Another easy way to add contrast to the overall look of your illustration is by contouring the dark areas. Load a dry liner brush with your darkest tone of brown and paint along the dark edges of the ring. You must be confident in your hand movement to get nice and regular lines. And don't worry too much if they are a bit wiggly. You will get better with practice. Now, there are a few different ways you can approach the sapphire painting situation. Here, I'm painting a bunch of triangles of different sizes in different directions to render the way the different facets of the gem are reflecting the light. Yes, you guessed it, it's all about light again. I paint my triangles with some Seigneurier Blue. I play with transparency and color values by adding either more water or paint to get a lighter or darker hue. And if you want to go the extra step and experiment even further, you can mix in a very small amount of red with your blue to get a slight color variation. The cold purple, pretty close to the blue, adds a subtle change to the gem color.
To finish up rendering the sapphire, I use a white gel pen to outline some of the gem facets. And to accentuate the highlights even more, I use my liner brush to outline them with a few dark blue lines here and there. And there you have it, your watercolor illustration of Vilia, the most powerful of the three elven rings of power crafted by Kelly Brimbor in the Second Age of Middle-earth. This video tutorial was exclusively focused on the drawing and painting aspects of this ring, but I cover more of Lord of the Rings content in my other videos. I upload weekly videos on art tutorials and Lord of the Rings content, so make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications if you want more of this type of videos. And also feel free to leave your thoughts and comments down below and make that like button shine while you're there. Okay guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, dare to create and enjoy the process. Bye guys!